Hello. In this video, we are going to use fruits to learn about objects and classes. The next part, we are going to learn what are constructors and how we use them in objects and classes. And we're going to create an array of objects that will allow us to sell and buy fruits. Now, if we think of this, all of the different fruits that we are going to be working with have the same characteristics or the same attribute. All of them may have a name, you can give them uh, a price and you can give them a quantity that you have available and maybe if it's ready or not to be eaten, right? So a class is just basically creating the blueprint for then using that blueprint create different, 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 different objects. Let's say that we want to create a blueprint, a class, for all the different fruits that I want to have on my shelf here to display. To do this, I need to create a class called fruits, and in that class, we're going to have multiple variables. Remember, those are the attributes that all my different fruits will have in common. In this case, they all will have a name, which is an string. Then you have quantity, an integer. Then you have price, a double. And then you may have a boolean that is told you if the fruit is ready to be eaten or not. Now, the classes also have inside the different actions that will be applied to the object. For example, if the fruit is available or not, in case that you have it or not, if you want to check if you have that fruit or not, and if you are selling the fruit or you buying the fruit. Those are actions. And when we are creating the class in Java, we are following this diagram, which is the UML diagram. We first gonna have the variables for our different fruits, objects, and we're going to have then the modulus or functions, which are the actions. Okay, so let's go and create this class in Java. We are using Eclipse, but you can use any other, and you should have a project. If not, you just, in your workspace, you create a new Java project. The interesting things here is that when we are creating new programs, what we actually creating are classes, because Java is a object-oriented programming language. So you have been working with classes even if you didn't know that. Now, let's say that we want to create a class. Remember that our class in this case is called fruit. So we want to give this file, the Java file, the name of fruit because the objects that we will create are of the type fruit. And we want to have the boy main function. Now, see that we have a class called fruit. And here we have the boy main function, we can work with that later. Now, inside of the class, the same as the UML diagram that we have here, we need to have this variable. We have an string, we have an integer, we have a double and we have a boolean. So let's go and create those four variables. We have an string called name. We have an integer called quantity. We have a double called price. And we have a boolean, which is if it's ready. It's ready. Now, we also have some modulus of actions that we are going to be applying to these variables, but we can go and work with that in a moment. So, what does that mean that this is a class? And how can we use this class to create an object? So, let's go and check. For example, we have uh, an apple. An apple, we have the name apple, is an object of the type fruit because you can define the quantities, the amount of apples that you have, you can define if it's ready or not, you can give it a price. So, for example, let's create an object, let's call it fruit one, that, and we're gonna give the characteristics 
to be an apple. So we're going to come here and we're going to say, okay, I have this variable in my main function. I want to create an object of the type fruit. So for example, when you were creating these variables, you have to give them a type, integer, double, or boolean. When we are creating an object, we also need to give it a type. In this case, fruit, because it's the blueprint that I just create. So I need to follow the same one, okay? What is the name of my fruit? Well, not the name that, that would be the value of the variable name, but how are we gonna call this fruit? Well, let's call it fruit one. Now I'm creating a new fruit. And I open and close this parenthesis to indicate that this is an object of the type fruit because we're going to have multiple values for this object, which are referring to the variables that we already create, all of those four variables. Okay, I create the object, but it's empty. I haven't given a value for name, quantity, price, and it's ready. So we can do this by saying, okay, all of the objects by all of the object variables are uh, modified by calling the object in this case fruit one and then dot the value or the variable that we want to modify or the modulo that we want to use okay i want to give the name to apple so right now my mp object which was fruit one now have a name if I want to change the quantity, I do the same thing. Fruit one, quantity. And I want to change it to, let's say I have 10 apples. And the, let's say that I have a price now. Fruit one will cost, um, let's say 50 cent. And then we have if it's ready or not. We're going to say that it's not ready. So we have the one is ready, and we're going to send it set, set that to false. Okay. So we successfully create an object, and we give the values for the variables within that object. So now this object is already exists. It's allocated in the memory and have uh, have values in those memory places. What if I want to print these values that I just assigned to the corresponding variables within encapsulated in this object called fruit one? Well, I will use the same functions as before, system out print, but I will, instead of calling name, quantity, price, and is ready, as we used to do before with variables, we want to use object that and the corresponding variable the same way that we just assign a value for those variables so i'm going to use system dot uh, dot print ln and i'm going to print the name and i can even print here uh, my fruit or oh, i have i have and um, space concatenation apple because i know that the name is apple right if i run this you will see in the console that it will say that i have an apple here i have an apple i can print also the quantities and price and if it's ready or not in the same way look now how we are accessing to this value which is on the variable name, but that belong to the fruit one only. If I create another fruit, let's say I create another fruit, and, and I give it a name, let's say I create a banana, fruit two, and I create a banana here. What happened is that the variable name that was assigned to apple only belongs to fruit one here 
it doesn't change or is not affected by the new one that is banana because this one only only exists within the object two which is fruit two right the second object if i print this i will have the same result i have an apple if i change this for to include the name of fruit two let's say that and a and i will call fruit two name so fruit two name now uh, it's supposed to say i have an apple and a banana let's see i have an apple and a banana we just need to have the space there okay well banana as well <laughs> um now this what we just did was create a blueprint here for an object we're still missing the modulus don't worry but in the function in the in the main function we were able to use that blueprint to create an object assign values to the variable of the object and then print it if we want to print it right this code that is inside of the main function could be in another file on this folder and it still will work in the same way no problem which help us to have abstraction and encapsulation in our in our program because if i create this object and the object work and is good i can leave it there no touch it and use that class sorry to create different different objects without changing the class so if there is a problem i just go to the class and modify the class instead of having to modify my code all over the again and again and again let's create the modulo in this case let's start with available this modulo only check if the quantity is bigger than zero it return true it's available if the quantity is zero or as smaller than zero which cannot be possible because you cannot have negative roots in this case um it will return false so here you have your variables that will be part of the blueprint of the class fruits and here is when you're going to add your module the first one is available so we have public it want to return a boolean so is boolean and the name is available and we need a value what value do we need well we need the quantity right however because this is inside of the same class it already have access to it so we want to return true if something happened in this case is the quantity is um bigger than zero so if quantity if quantity is bigger than zero then then return true return true else return false so if i call this function on if i go to my main you know for example fruit one here quantity is 10 so the value that will return if i call available on phone on, on fruit one will be true let's see if we change this sprint this and we just have system print and we want to call fruit one fruit one available look how the function appear here because we already created i don't need to pass anything because we already they already know that we created and all of that no problem if i run this i will have true if in the other hand if i call available on fruit 2 the result should be false 
because we didn't assign any quantity to fruit two and we don't have any value as default here. So if I change this for two and I run, I will have false as expected. Now, we could change quantity here for this, that quantity. The difference is that now you are explicitly saying that you are, when you pass an object to this, in this case fruit 2, you are using that object and you are saying what is the quantity value of this object, which is the object that is created every time that you use the class. Cell, for now, the only thing that will do is to decrease the quantity by one and by will increase the quantity by one so if i have i can use the same math the same logic but now we are not returning any value so it can be void and it will be called cell and what it will do is that it will change this quantity to one minus the current one, it will decrease by one. By will be the opposite. Because if you are the store owner and you buy, you will have more, right? Will be the opposite. By will make quantity increase by one. Now, if I call, for example, if I call fruit one, you know that we have 10 apples, right? If I call fruit one and I say quantity, uh, sorry, and I say uh, buy, it should not print anything because it doesn't return anything. So this is not nothing that we will do here, right? So let's just call this and then we're going to print proof one and we're going to print the quantity and here we need this so what you are doing is you are buying one apple so you have now 11 and you will see that when you run it here the result is 11. if you change this to sell and you run it oh look the value is 9 instead of being 10. Well, that happened because every time that we run the program, we have the quantity is 10, and then we sell 1 is 9. So it's not that it saves uh, the value that we have before, that we assign when we, buy, when we call buy function. If I call it again, it will be 11. You see? Okay. So we were able to create a class, a blueprint for fruit. We were able to create different fruits with the class. We were able to change the value of the variables and as well calling the different functions. We can increase the complexity of this by saying, oh, wait a second, if I'm calling by yourself, I would like to add more than one. So you can have an integer, you can have an integer, and you can say that this is what it was before, plus i, plus i, and in this case, minus i. So, minus i, like this, you can, when you call the function, say how many you want to buy or sell. Let's say that I want to buy five. So the value that I'm expecting to receive when I uh, print this is 10 plus five, which is 15. And here you go. Cool. And with this, we complete the two parts of this video, where we create a class fruit, which have variables and have modulus, and we use that class, that blueprint, to create objects. And 
we can access to those variables and we can use those functions or those modulus. Cool. In the next video, we are going to learn how to give the file values of this so that when I am creating a fruit, I don't have to go line by line to change all of the variable values. And we are going to be able to create a rate of different objects. So if I want to if I want to have an array with all the fruits that I have on my shelf, I can do so, which basically is creating an array of objects. Which objects? Fruit. Cool. Bye-bye.